Welcome to the special episode of Community Affairs, Meet Your Councilman. Today we have in studio with us CM Costa Constantinidis. Welcome to our show, CM uh, Costa. Thank you so much for having me, Jessica. Thank you. Uh, CM Costa, you have been uh, taking care of District 22nd in New York. And you ha this last term was your first term, and mm -hmm. you are also uh, uh, running for the same position this year as well, this November. Mm -hmm. The primaries are over, so I'm sure you just, you're a bit relaxed now and <laughs> then working on your next election campaign. Uh, you take care of the areas uh, that covers Astoria, uh, some parts of uh, East Elmars and Jackson Heights, Woodside, where there, you know, we, we know that it is heavily populated by the South Asian communities. Can you just share with our uh, audience that in your last tenure, what how, how and in whichever way you have supported the South Asian communities. Thanks for having me today. Um, you know, Astoria is an amazing place. Uh, it's, you know, we have 160 languages spoken in the borough of Queens, uh, and you know, every language is spoken in Astoria. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, one of the little known facts about Astoria is that the third largest Bangladeshi community in Queens is in the 22nd Council District. Okay. So you, you make a, you're part of uh, everyone is part of the fabric that makes our district great, um, and I want to make sure we foster and and build relationships and ensure that everyone is part of the process and are able to get the American dream for themselves. So prior to being elected, I uh, worked with the Bangladeshi community to actually set up the Bangladeshi Independence Day, uh, working for Councilmember Jim Gennaro and working with former Borough President Helen Marshall because prior to being elected, I worked for the council was a strong advocate for Muslim school holidays, working with the coalition to ensure that we got those holidays off and that no one had to make a choice between um, their, their, whole, you know, their holy days and going to school and making sure their kids get an education. Now, post being elected, we made sure that we funded organizations um, like the Muslim American Society, uh, ensuring that they can get a new computer lab and, and working uh, to make sure that they have funding for their after-school programs, working to fight for immigrant rights and for citizenship. So this year we were able to uh, secure over $40,000 for the An Ansab Refugee Center on Steinway Street to make sure that if, if someone needs an attorney to, uh, for immigration services or others, that they can reach out. And there's an attorney in the neighborhood, a nonprofit attorney that can help them at low cost or no cost. Um, these are the types of things. And then, you know, working in the council, uh, being able to stand uh, with uh, the only Muslim uh, uh, member of the council, Idanik Miller, um, to fight for uh, rights and, and stand and, and, and also, you know, fight to make sure we have halal food available uh, in the schools. It's, it's beyond time to make sure that we have culturally uh, appropriate food. No child should have to go hungry uh, because they want to make sure they can observe their religion. And there's a lot more to do. Um, we have uh, a, a someone in Washington, a, a, a president that is uh, attacking our community, trying to divide um, us. Uh, CM Costa, yes, you just, uh, since you mentioned the president uh -huh. of the United States of America, uh, just curious to know from you that Trump's rhetoric and his policies have had a huge impact on the immigrant communities and completely have shaken them. And the recent issues of DACA, which is uh, go, uh, the finalization is going to take place in New York, I, I guess, in the mayor's office on 5th of October. Uh, what uh, exactly is your role in, in DACA policy? You know, we need to stand up strong here for, the, for those kids. It doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, this president has been divisive, uh, destructive, uh, has, has you know, attempted to tear us apart. And there's much more that, that's, that's, that the same than different about all of us. And this president seeks to find differences and divide us in that way. And I'm, you know, we have to stand strong. So as a council, we've stood very, we had a, a rally back in February um, to 
uh, stand with our Muslim community when he put out that, that despicable uh, ban from Muslim community uh, countries. Uh, we have in the council strong, strong against DACA. We've provided funding uh, to, uh, for unaccompanied minors. We've provided additional funding. Again, as I said, $45,000 just from my office, but we've you know, made our uh, allocation to the city council this year, over $16 million between the mayor and the city council for, uh, for immigrants and to ensure that uh, as this president seeks to deport and to attack our, our immigrant communities, that we're going to stand with them and make sure that no family is torn apart. And it, it's, it's just despicable in the way that he's done this and, and is un-American. Uh, Sam Costa, you are on several committees uh, in the legislation, the Committee on the Civil Service and Labor, and there you're on the Committee of Contract and Cultural Affairs and Libraries, International Intergroup Relations, and most importantly, you chair the Committee on Environmental Protection. Tell us something about this committee that you work on, environmental protection. As far as we know that your local law 66 in 2040, that has the, the bill that you have submitted, that has been passed as a local law 66. Tell us something about that as well. You know, the environment, uh, we here in, in Western Queens, uh, we have a lot of challenges, uh, whether it's the power plants that provide 55% of the city's power, uh, whether it's the airport, whether it's the Grand Central Parkway, that runs right through the middle of our neighborhood. Large buildings, we have a sewage treatment plant here in Astoria. We have lots of environmental challenges, but we're also in a flood zone. Uh, we are, you know, over 50% of our district's in a flood zone, and that's a challenge for us as a neighborhood. Now you take up the larger issue of climate change and looking at uh, the intensity of the hurricanes that we've seen this year, um, that we've seen one year after another be hotter than the next, um, climate change is the challenge of our time. So dealing on issues of the environment and making sure that we can reduce our emissions. Um, that was, my bill was to reduce our city emissions 80% by the year 2050. That's a big goal. Yeah. But if we get there, we can make sure communities like Astoria that So 50 how far have you reached <laughs> to that goal from I mean, 2014 uh, and There's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. I mean, in all honesty, you know, we know what the challenge is. It's being a, a water a community surrounded by water, um, if sea level rises, 50% of our community could vanish into, into the East River. That's a real challenge. Uh, since uh, we were talking <laughs> about President Trump and he doesn't believe in climate change, how do you think New York, as, as, a, as a council member of New York City and the challenges that you mentioned within New York City, how do you think uh, you are going to uh, you know, um, fit into the Trump, President Trump's policy here? Well, we're not. <laughs> we're not going to fit into President Trump's policy. We're going to be a international leader, as New York City always is. Uh, we are going to lead the way on the environment, whether that's passing laws relating to geothermal technology, mm -hmm. ensuring that for the first time in city history, we take into account the social cost of carbon, and when we're implementing uh, renewable energy sources, whether that's doing solar panels mm -hmm. on city buildings. This year, I funded solar panels on our first school and on our first library. So coming very soon, we'll start to see solar panels on city buildings here in our so, neighborhood. So CM Costa, what are you actually doing to get the solar panels, panels to all the community members in the neighborhood? Are oh, you working on it? Absolutely. I mean, we, you know, we're starting with city buildings, but we're also trying to make it easier for uh, local homeowners and businesses to put solar panels on their own buildings. Okay. One of the biggest challenges I see is that too often it's either too expensive or it's too complicated. The buildings department or this agency or that age, they sent you, they give you a runaround. It should be as easy to be green as it is traditional. And if we can make it easy, then people can make uh, choices not based on time or money, but on their own values. And uh, you said that um uh, since you work a lot on the environmental issue, tell us something about uh, the libraries that uh, the International Intergroup, uh, Cultural Affairs, and all this relationship, which I we think that are very important for the youth in your neighborhood and the community around you. Uh, tell us something about what kind of work you do that is related to cultural affairs and libraries and well, other you know, groups. Absolutely. I mean, we are really want to make uh, an investment in our cultural uh, 
uh, heritage. Make sure that everyone is able to access libraries and fund uh, cultural programs in our community. So some of the things that we've done are ensure as a council that libraries are open six days a week and we expand the hours. Uh, making sure that we provide opportunities for new technology. Um, I've actually funded the uh, renovation of both libraries in our district. So starting next year, the Steinway Library will close to add an elevator and to have a new children's room and to have ADA compliance and to have um, uh, electronic drop-off so you can come any time of day and drop off your book if you need to drop off that library book. Okay. Um, but also doing programming at the libraries. Uh, we funded programs like the Astoria Performing Arts Center, um, the Astoria Art House. Uh, we're providing programming uh, to the arts here in our neighborhood to ensure you know, at, at Long Island City High School, we have over uh, 10 schools now that have the cultural after school adventure. So after school programming for kids that they can have the arts in their schools as, and then they have to do a performance and get to go either to Queens College or to Little Orchestra Society or all these different groups that we fund, but they get to, to experience the, those cultural events because sometimes that's, they have to find their passion in the arts and make sure that we, we foster the whole child, not just the, just, not just the reading and writing in, in the classroom. Uh, CM Costa, I think uh, we'll just take a short break and then we'll be back to our show again. Sounds good. We're just taking a short break. Stay with us. <laughs> The show of Community Affairs, a special episode, Meet Your Council Member. We have with us today CM Costa. Uh, CM Costa, welcome back. Uh, what we were discussing before we went to the break was the, uh, your, your uh, work on cultural affairs and libraries. Tell us something about the most recent legislation that you have been working on. Now, here in our neighborhood, asthma is a huge challenge. Um, as you get closer, the western port of our district uh, in, in zip codes 101, 102, 106, we see higher than the borough average of Queens of both ER visits and hospitalizations. And our children are missing school 10 to 30 days a year on average. It's a lot of time. They're also spending a lot of money for asthma vacation. So we're introducing asthma le uh, legislation to track asthma in New York City, to create an asthma map so we know where the clusters of asthma are. And then we are um, creating, uh, asking schools to have a nebulizer. So if a child's in distress, they can get that medication quickly. So maybe they don't have to go to the emergency room. Or maybe when they get to the emergency room, it won't be as, as, as severe an attack. Um, you know, we want to keep kids out of the ER because it costs tens of thousands of dollars to families when uh, they are admitted. Since you just brought out the health issues of children, uh, about uh, President Trump's uh, repealing the Obamacare, you know, yesterday we, it came out in the mainstream media that it is being a big challenge for the Republicans to, you know, opt out of it. Uh, how do you think New York uh, City Council is going to take this issue? We, we, we're standing strong against it. I mean, we know that it is, it's, 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 it's going to kill people. I mean, we know that if you, they repeal health care, people will die and that folks with pre-existing conditions will not be able to will be discriminated against and not be able to get health care. That young people who are right now are in school will not be able to stay on their parents' health care. That people with severe illnesses like asthma. Mm -hmm. um, asthma, you need a long-term plan. Yeah. I know from my own son, he needs five medications just to stay well every day. Every morning before school, he has a whole regimen of medications that he has to take, and he hates it. <laughs> But, yes, this, yes. but a lifetime cap, removing 
putting a lifetime cap on how much you can spend, you can spend on someone's health care. Someone has a catastrophic event, you're, you're taking away their health care. It's un-American. It's, un it's, 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 it's un inhuman. <laughs> Same question. What I, I understand from you that to be a politician and to go out and work for the community, it takes a lot of empathy. And sometimes the empathy we term is in Italian learners, wor I mean words, mobile empathy. You put yourself in the shoes of others and see how it is. Uh, how you have taken this up? What actually empathizes you and drives you to do what you're doing? I've been here in my neighborhood my whole life. I grew up here. I, I love this neighborhood. Um, you know, I, my first job was on Steinway Street. I put myself through school working as a toy store manager while I was in college at KB Toys, as some of your <laughs> watch, <laughs> you know, watchers may remember, um, right here on Steinway Street. Um, but now I'm raising my own family here. And I see families struggle. And I recognize the same challenges that my family had um, from one generation to the next, the American dream. Uh, I see immigrant families and, and families that are struggling to acclimate. And I'm first generation. My father came here when he was young. Um, so I want to make sure that I leave the neighborhood better than I found it. And I know I'll be a council member for a short period of time with term limits. I'll be a council member hopefully eight years. If I'm reelected this November, I'll have the opportunity to serve a second term. But in the span of my life, that's a very short period of time. I want to do as much so good as I can. So what is your mandate for the election <laughs> that you are going to face this November? You have passed the primaries. You had no other con contestants. But then in uh, general election, NYC city council election, you are going to have an opponent. So what is your mandate and how you think you're going to uh, if, do you think at all that you're going to fare well in the elections? Uh, I'm going to present my, my record. We've renovated more than half the open space in our district. We've renovated our parks and provided $30 million to renovate Astoria Park, which is the largest investment in the park's history. We've uh, invested in building science labs in schools. We are going to open the first two science labs this November. Um, and we're, we've provided technology to all of those schools to make sure that our kids can keep up in the 21st century. We're, we've been able to clean our neighborhood and have a better environment on geothermal and solar technology. We're going to leave the neighborhood better than we found it. And that, that's all that counts. And uh, Sam Costa, we are just almost at the end of our show. The last thing that uh, I would like to ask you is, uh, what is your passion? What do you do when you're off duty? <laughs> we all know you're a very busy man, but then... When you are off duty, what does Sam Costa do? You know, when I'm off duty, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge baseball fan. Great. Huge baseball fan. I, I know I'm from, I'm from Queens, but I'm, from, I'm a fan of the Yankees, <laughs> <laughs> which gets me into a lot of trouble. Um, but I, my, my son, um, my eight-year-old son, he and I, he plays Little League in the neighborhood. I coach his Little League team. We go to baseball games together. We go to movies together. I just make my little buddy. So that's really my passion is making sure that I give him a better life than I had and make sure I teach him the right things. Um, but we play baseball together all the time. People, you'll see me in, in my baseball shirt and my baseball cap walking around the neighborhood on days he has baseball games at the library, yeah. at, at the supermarket. And I encourage people to say hello. You know, stop and tell me the things that you feel we're doing well and tell me the things you think we're not doing well. And I'll always answer you. Uh, I'll always take the time. And if there's an, if something that I feel that we can, we, if you feel we can do better, I want to make sure we can. Uh, Sim Costa, uh Another uh, question that I really need to ask you is, how accessible is your office uh, for our audience, like if they face any kind of problem that they can reach you anytime? You can always email me. Um, we did not use my last name because it was too long. <laughs> but it's Costa, C-O-S-T-A, at council.nyc.gov. I read the email myself. So it may take a little longer to, because I, I make sure I, I give you a good answer. Uh, you can always call my office at 718-274-4500. Or you can write me a letter, and we'll, every, we'll, we'll make sure we're always there for you. Sim Costa, it was really wonderful having you in our studio today. It was my great honor and pleasure, always. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being with us. Next week, we'll be up with another CM who you think is a favorite to you. Thank you.